guys, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. 5 liter Ford guys, what do you think? Carbs versus computers, let's get it on. Actually, this video doesn't answer as an absolute carburetors versus computers because really no video can do that. But what we are going to take a look at is specific carbureted combination versus specific EFI combination. Let's start out with our carbs. In the carbureted corner, we have a dual plane RPM non-air gap. Elbrock intake manifold, always a good choice for your average performance 5 liter combination. And we have a 750 carburetor. Uh oh, what's gonna happen? Should I have chose a 650 or a 750? If I would have chosen the smaller 650, I would have got all the 750 guys jump on my case. Richard, you need to use a bigger carburetor. So I stepped up to the bigger carburetor despite the fact that on the street, probably a 650 might work a little bit better. But we went with a 750. What about on the EFI side? Make your comments because I chose a GT40 intake, not because I thought it was going to make the most power. In fact, there's no way that it did make the most power. There were much better choices. I could have chose a System X and an RPM2, maybe even a super ported Cobra intake manifold. But why did you choose the GT40? You've limited our EFI stuff with the small GT40 and 65 millimeter throttle body. The reason that I chose it is because recently, and you can take a look at that video because it's up already, I ran all the GT40 stuff, the tubular GT40, the Cobra, the SN95, and the Explorer in various different configurations. And that video is up, so you should check it out. But the reason that I chose this is I ran that combination. I also ran a carbureted combination when I was doing the cam test. So naturally, a comparison head-to-head -head shootout was necessary. Let's check it out. Pretty simple combination for our test motor, mild 302 with a cam, ported heads, rockers, headers, MSD distributor, and an intake carburetor versus EFI. To get things started, we're going to take a look at what happened when we ran our 302, our 5 liter test motor in carbureted trim. And this was basically a Marshall Engines rebuilt 302 with stock block, crank, rods, pistons. We, we topped this thing with a set of blueprint engines, aluminum CNC ported heads. Uh, and again, ported heads obviously are going to help this thing make more power. Let's take a look at the rest of our description. We had 1.6 bolt down roller rockers because those blueprint heads were designed to accept bolt down roller rockers. They're 1.6 aluminum rollers. We had an Elbrock Performer RPM, but not air gap intake manifold on there. We ran this carbureted combination with a 750 Holley with Percy's adjusted jets, just external jets that allowed us to run um, external adjustments on it to dial in the air fuel. We had an inch and three quarter long tube headers with extensions, but no mufflers. We also had an MSD distributor, and naturally, as we always do, we adjusted jetting and timing to try to optimize the power output. So run in this carbureted Aww. trim, our carbureted 5 liter produced right at 400 horsepower, 399.9 horsepower, and 376 foot-pounds of torque. Note that peak power occurred out here at 6,300, and peak torque occurred at 4,800 RPM. And as an interesting side note, um, this thing was run with the Ford E303 camshaft, very popular in 5-liter stuff, especially back in the day, and apparently still popular now. Here's what happened when we had run this thing with a stock camshaft. So with the stock camshaft, this thing produced 369 horsepower, basically 30 horsepower down from the still fairly mild E303 cam. And this shows this thing made pretty good power even with the stock camshaft, but having a decent camshaft, which the E303 certainly qualifies as that, obviously it made more power with more camshaft. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran this combination, our carbureted combination, when we ran it with fuel injection. A few changes were necessary when upgrading to the EFI from the carbureted combination. We replaced the carburetor with a Holley HP management system and harness. A number of things remain like the electric water pump and the long tube headers, but we installed larger injectors. We retained the MSD distributor, but installed a GT40 upper and lower intake manifold.
before we get to the results of running the GT40 upper and lower intake manifold on our modified 302 5 liter combination, I need to address what seems to be a concern in the 5 liter community, and that's regarding my choice of injectors on this fuel injected combination. We ran 80 pound Excel injectors, and a lot of comments based on the previous GT40 video that I put up. Hey, Richard, those are way too big. Why are you running that big of an injector? It's going to be way too rich. Well, no, it's not going to be. But there are a couple of reasons I ran these injectors. One, and first and foremost, these are the injectors that I had laying around. We've used them on a lot of other stuff, lots of LS stuff. So I put those in this five there, and they work perfectly fine. The other thing is we may be stepping up later to boost and or E85. So you want to make sure you have enough fuel supply for that intended power output. The other thing is, and this is really the concern, those injectors are too big. They're going to flood this thing. They're going to make it too rich. No, using our Holly HP management system, we can actually supply less fuel if that's what it needs. Let's get to the results. Now, to take a look at how well our combination did, our five liter performance combination did in carbureted trim. Let's take a look and see what happened when we replaced the carburation with fuel Aww. injection. And in this case, we ran a GT40 factory GT40, well, GT40 upper and lower from Ford Racing, and we equipped it also with a 65 millimeter throttle body, and remember, by, it, by no means is this the most powerful EFI combination you can make, it's just that I had run this with a series of GT40 based intake manifolds, mostly the uppers, so we ran the GT40, we ran the Cobra, the SN95, <clears throat> excuse me, and also the Ford Explorer. So you can take a look at that video because that video is up. But here's what happened when we ran this thing with the GT40 intake manifold. You can see uh, the GT40 made a lot less power. In fact, the combination produced 365 horsepower and compared to the carbureted version, made peak power down at 5,500 RPM owing to its long runner intake manifold design. Not that it doesn't flow enough, it's just that the runner leg is dictating where this thing wants to make power. And in this case, wants to make peak power at 5,500 RPM, and it fell off fairly dramatically after that. The GT40, because of the long runner also, did make more torque. In fact, it produced 378 foot-pounds of torque and did so way down at 3,800 RPM. And you can see the GT40 had two little torque bulges compared to the dual plane combination. It had this here between 3,500 and 4,100, and then again between 2,800 and 3,400 RPM, where it made a, a fairly good bit more torque in the case of between 35 and 400, or um, 4,000. 363 versus 378 so it made quite a bit more torque there in that range in the very middle part they were kind of the same and then above 4600 rpm the carbureted combination just kind of pulled away so the question is now is there an efi intake manifold that can actually compete with this dual plane Okay, guys, it's time once again for what is the takeaway from this video? And the takeaway is this. Is carburation better than fuel injection? Actually, this test doesn't tell us that. <laughs> what it tells more about is the fact that we ran a dual plane R performer RPM from Edelbrock and that intake manifold design, not necessarily carburation versus fuel injection, but that intake design makes more power than the fuel injected GT40. Again, carburation is not superior to fuel injection. It has much more to do with what particular intake manifold that we choose. So in this case, the dual plane manifold wanted to continue to make power as we went all the way out to 6,500 RPM. It made quite a bit more peak power. It did, however, as we saw from the torque curve, make less torque through a lot of the curve than the long runner GT40. So once again, it always comes down to where do you want your power production? Are you more interested in the low speed torque up to like 5,500 RPM or so? Or are you interested in the big top end charge from 4,500 out to 6,500, which would be, you know, more beneficial if you're going through the gears at a drag strip or something. So what do you want? That's going to help determine it. But this brings up the next question. What EFI intake manifold would you guys pick to compete with that dual plane carbureted intake? Let me know in the comments. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.